Let's pray. Father, we just worship you this morning. It's just so good to consider, just to consider you, how wonderful you are, how mighty, majestic, powerful and wise. We worship you this morning. We worship you this morning. Father, I pray you take whatever words I've got and make them live. Breathe them into our hearts because we need to hear from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I was intending to be Sam this morning and I didn't make it. He's in Wales, unfortunately. Um, good for him, I suppose. Go kart racing. Go kart racing. Oh, something like that. Racing something. It's nearly 80 years since the end of the last war in Europe and nearly 30 years since the Bosnian crisis. And it's frankly hard to imagine this kind of thing happening again. All our lives are so interconnected. Our economies are all interconnected. And you just think, what could possibly be gained by it? We've become complacent and comfortable. And we see, again, the, the four horsemen trampling across our part of the world. And in the space of a few days, our way of life doesn't seem as secure as it did a week ago. It would be easy to lose our peace and to worry about what comes next. But I'm not going to speculate. We can do that on our own. Some might even see this assertion of Russian aggression as an end times thing. Amen. I'm not going to argue against that. Jesus is certainly coming soon. And our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. One of my readings this morning was in Colossians 3. So let's have a look at that. Thank you. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Read that again, it's really short. Since then, you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. This is a word for me today and I'm very happy to share it with you. Uh, let's have a look at it because it will help. There we go. Since then you've been raised with Christ. What does that mean? Just as Jesus died in our place taking the punishment for our sins, for my sins and yours, he gives us life in his resurrection. We must understand that this isn't a promise of something later. Going to heaven when we die. Or that kind of thing. This is now. Christ died, and so did we, to sin. Christ rose, and so did we, to life and therefore says Paul set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God our focus not just our focus but our, our, our aspiration our, our whole orientation of our lives must be heavenwards 
on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Mr. Putin thinks that like some sort of emperor, he can control the world around him through force. I think there are probably a few others in the world that think the same thing. They'll throw their weight around and break things like petulant children. But Christ sits at the right hand of God, far above all power and authority and dominion, as Paul tells us in Ephesians 1. We don't have to worry about this because Putin isn't in control. Jesus is. But we are to set our hearts in that place. We're to set our hearts in that place. We feel for our Ukrainian friends whose homes are threatened by this outrage, but our hearts are not here. They're not invested in a piece of land, however green and pleasant it may be, but they are set above and this gives us stability and clarity and focus paul reiterates this in verses two and three set your minds on things above not on earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with christ in god we set our hearts and our minds on things above and not on earthly things. Jesus said this, Matthew 22, 37 and 38. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. By, our, by heart, he means our our passion and our energy, our, our drive and, and our mind is, is our decision-making abilities. Everything we do is motivated from heaven because as we belong to Jesus Christ, who is seated at the right hand of the Father. And Jesus said that if we seek Those things first. Everything else that we need will be given to us. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you. There's a saying that we can be too heavenly minded to be of any earthly use. Um, this is certainly not what Jesus said. Or Paul. I don't believe it. This is this. You died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. We have a spiritual perspective. We set our minds on things above our aspiration. Our identity is in him. Okay, I don't feel dead which is probably a good thing, because I'm not. I'll have another look back at Ephesians. I keep coming back to Ephesians. Ephesians is brilliant. Um, Ephesians 2, 1 to 7. Um, it's a chunk, but we'll take some bits out of it. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the power of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature the children of wrath because of his great love for us. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. 
And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heaven, in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So we're talking about a spiritual response to the things that are going on in the world around us. That's what I'm on with here. We see what's going on in the world and we could, we could worry. I mean, you know, we've, we've had Brexit, we've had the pandemic, uh, we've had the whole kind of economic rockiness of the thing and now this. And we could think, <laughs> what's going on? What's going on? You know, we see um, inflation rising and fuel prices going through the roof. But let's respond in the spirit here. Let's respond in the spirit here. We're in Christ. I want to pick a few verses out of this passage. As for you, Paul says, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. At one time, all of us were outside of Christ and governed by the powers that dominate the world. We were. Paul goes on to name these things. If you read further on in Colossians 3, he puts a name to them. Then in verses 4 and 5, I'm not crazy about the way the NIV renders this, but it's there. But God, there is a, it's a but God moment. But God made us alive. With Christ, it is by grace that we've been saved. We were dead in our transgressions, but God made us alive in Christ. That is our perspective. We are in Christ. Our natural perspective is the heavenly one. This is where we belong. This is where our home is. You know that, that old song? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Back to Colossians. You died. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So does that make sense? Verse 4 is a strange one. In Christ, so as your life appears, you will appear with him in glory. In Christ, so as your life appears, and you will appear with him in glory. So just we just said that we died. We were dead in our transgressions and sins, but God raised us up with Christ. So do you see how important resurrection is? It's key to everything. It's absolutely central. We live because Christ lives, and our take on life is the same as his. We are here to do his work, to seek his kingdom. Was the evening someone, I think it might have been Margaret, said uh, there's a difference between believing in Jesus and believing on him, or words to that effect. I, I, I believe that Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet so, and that Boris Johnson is the prime minister and that Putin's probably bitten off more than he can chew. These are facts and opinions. This is my worldview, so to speak. But on the other hand, I've invested my life in Christ. And I'll trust him with it. That's a different level of belief. It's believing on rather than believing in. I'm standing on him. This is not just stuff that I happen to know or think about. These are not opinions. These are facts. I'm seated with Christ Which is really, really hard to get your head around. It's an extraordinary thought. But this is what the scriptures tell us. This is what the resurrection of Jesus means. Is what he is giving to us. And when we see the world falling apart on our doorstep, we don't have to panic. 
He's given us life and light and peace. So Christ is our life. You and I are in him, seated in a heavenly place with God. <laughs> we are seated in the heavenly place with God. So we, we, we sort of under, understand the idea of incarnation. The idea that, that God, the word, became flesh and, and, and dwelt among us and that Jesus is, 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 is God in a, in a body and he's walking around and if we look at Jesus we can see the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Jesus said. And John told his disciples, the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Jesus reveals the Father and, and we, in that sense, reveal Jesus, the Father sent him, he reveals the Father. He sends us. So when people meet us, they should, they should see Jesus. It's that, um, that song we sometimes sing, Graham Kendrick's song. May the fragrance of Jesus fill our lives. So that where we are, his fragrance fills it. That's a challenge. That's a challenge. When I walk out of the room, what, what, what am I leaving behind? Is it a whiff of links? <laughs> or or something, something more, you know, natural? <laughs> or am I leaving the fragrance of Jesus? His presence, his sweetness. His love, his grace. So Jesus reveals the Father and we reveal Jesus. That's how it's supposed to go. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, Paul says that we are ambassadors of Christ. But here, in Colossians 3, he switches it around. He says, when Christ appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. It's not that he's here when we, you know, with Del and I together in the midst. It's that when he appears, we appear. In other words, he will reveal us. <laughs> Why? Why is this? Spiritually, we're with him now in glory. We don't perceive it because, quite frankly, our hearts and our minds are so rarely set on things above. Our eyes are downcast most of the time. This is the case. We, you know, we're having a good day. We're in the spirit. We're worshipping. And then a stone comes through the windscreen of the car. And I think, oh... <laughs> Or something like that happens, and, and suddenly we're back down to earth, and we're dealing with stuff, and we take our focus off spiritual things. And we don't have to take our focus off the spiritual things, we, but we do. We get distracted. We are, our, our, our eyes are downcast. We worry about stuff we shouldn't worry about. We had this on Friday. Don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And he'll give you his peace. To paraphrase Philippians 4. So, what does this mean? Then Christ, who is our life, appears. We'll appear with him in glory. So, first thing it means is that when Jesus returns, we'll return with him. Jude 24 says this. We're not very often reach from Jude, do we? See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones. So I don't think he means angels, because these are his holy ones. The church. If, 
if we're, if we're still around at the time when Jesus appears, I, I, I suspect it'll be like being plugged in, you know? Suddenly we'll light up. I think there's also a more mundane, a more mundane um, meaning to this. A bit more mundane anyway. So most of the time we don't see the kingdom of God. <laughs> We're just aware that, you know, most of the churches we know are pretty moribund. <laughs> and, and we see people you know, kind of missing the point and, 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 and actually we sit in judgment too often in our hearts and we shouldn't do that but we do tend to and we don't really see the kingdom of God we, we see the, 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 the forces of the enemy pushing back and, 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 and it's almost as if the kingdom of God's in retreat but I don't believe it I don't believe it but we don't see it because we're looking down because our eyes are downcast we see problems and difficulties but not God's provision in them. <laughs> Working for an organisation like Walk is a great antidote for this kind of thing, actually, because you just see the kingdom of God all the time. <laughs> Even where God intervenes miraculously, we're keen to explain it away. Well, it got better. Does that really happen? I hardly believe in myself. But when Christ is glorified, when his name is lifted up, then suddenly we see him at work all around us. All of a sudden, Pops into focus and Christ is glorified when his name is lifted up. We suddenly see his people at work everywhere, all around us. So, four verses in Colossians chapter 3. What do we take away from this? So, first, our identity is in Christ. So, our outlook on life must reflect this we set our hearts on things above it's easy to become absorbed into what's going on in the world around us but we must be engaged in the world of course we need to be engaged in the world you know we teach our guys to be good citizens to be involved in what's going on to make a con positive contribution to the world around them of course they should be doing that we should be doing that but from a heavenly perspective, our home is not this world. This world is not my home. This doesn't mean that we need to come out with a lot of Christian language that no one understands. God waffle, as we say. But that we allow Christ to live through us. Our identity is in Christ. Second, we're seated at the right hand of God now. He is the source of all power and dominion. And that's where we're seated. This is where our focus rests and where our hearts belong. Third, your life is now hidden with Christ in God. We are in Christ and Christ is in God. It's like Russian dolls. Because of that, when he appears, wherever his name is glorified and when he comes, we appear with him. It's like the kingdom pops into focus and everyone can see what he's doing. So let's look at that. 
passage again. Ooh, there we go. Since then you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Amen. We're going to sing another song. In Christ alone? <laughs>